Welcome back, everyone. I got to share something that is just phenomenally interesting here with you on the same topic I've covered in the last few videos. I can't believe I'm doing another video on First Baptist Orlando and these Calvinists who have come out to attack it as if it's pro-LGBTQ, when in fact, that's such a distortion of the truth. So in this case, I'm going to show you something that once again is going to prove John MacArthur to be a big hypocrite. It's also going to mean Justin Peters owes a major apology to First Baptist Orlando, and I'll explain how that works as we get into it. So bear with me. This is going to be a fascinating video about the mindset behind these Calvinists to show they just lack they lack any integrity whatsoever. They'll they'll spin any story any way to make another church look bad. Doesn't doesn't matter. So we know that. This all started with Reformation Charlotte. This is a Calvinist rag that masquerades as a Christian newspaper and online. And they put out stories that really smear other churches and they're loose on the facts and they omit key facts that give proper context. And so John MacArthur probably without any homework done on his own part, just grabs the Reformation Charlotte article and says, this is interesting. I'll just, I'll just speak about this and read it in my Sunday sermon. And everyone will know Everyone here at Grace Community Church is wonderful and we're perfect. And look at these horrible churches out there. Aren't you glad you don't belong to a horrible church like that? We're the ones who got it right. That's the whole motivation behind him doing that. And at least in my opinion, that's why he does it. And so anyway, so he gets out there. He slams this Orlando church, First Baptist Orlando. And then all the minions who love John MacArthur pick it up and they start doing their videos. Justin Peters does one. Colin Miller does one. The Reforma uh, the Doctrinal Watchdog. Does. I'm sure there are others I missed that, that did it. You know, this guy, BTWN, he does he covers everything John MacArthur does, uh, and, which is kind of fascinating in its own right. Uh, but anyway, what are you going to do? So anyway, I want to show you the ironic twist of all this that you're just not going to believe. You, you can't believe it. It's, it's, it's like... It's stranger than fiction. I mean, this is so bizarre, I cannot get over it. So, so let's jump to the next thing I want to show you. Okay, so bear with me. We're going to get there to the ironic twist in all of this that is going to be blow your mind. But first, I just want to, this is an article. This was the article. This is the Reformation Charlotte ar article blasting this SBC church, First Baptist Orlando. By the way, if you go to firstorlando.com, you'll see their website. You can look on every single tab you can find. You'll never see one reference to the SBC anywhere on this church. I pointed that out in my other videos. Uh, but they are technically part of the SBC. And... Uh, uh, but you got to go to the SBC's website to find them. You're not going to find any reference to SBC on First Baptist Orlando's website. As a matter of fact, they're slowly but surely dropping the Baptist part, and they're, they're refer, they refer to themselves now as First Orlando. They still have both references on their website, but you know when they talk about themselves, they just they don't say First Baptist Orlando. They say First Orlando. Just what it's worth. Oh, by the way, in case this is the first video you're watching on this topic from me and you've missed the other ones I've done, you may want to go watch them as well. But let me just, for a brief kind of background, uh, I don't go to this church, First Baptist Orlando. I have been there. I live in Orlando. I'm familiar with this church. And I was there at a Christmas service once because it's a big church. I'm not a big fan of mega churches, but for the Christmas thing, I thought it'd be fun to go. The family went because we were invited. We have friends that go to this church, solid Christian families. I've never heard anything but good stuff about this church. And these are families that would not tolerate going to a pro-LGBTQ uh, church. So I went ahead when all this thing blew up and I, I know one of the pastors and I sent him a text message. What's, you know... Here's the Justin Peters video. What do you think about this? And what's the position of the church officially when it comes to LGBTQ and sin? The response I got back, if anyone's curious, before I get on to what's going to be more interesting, I think, is was that they absolutely do not condone that lifestyle. They recognize it is a sin. It's a sexually immoral sin. And yet they don't they welcome anyone in the door because they recognize that we're all sinners before we come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and get born again. And so the number one mission of First Baptist Orlando is the Great Commission. And they want to reach everybody. They, they encourage everyone to go out, whether, you know, you don't have to go to, uh, you know, uh, Zimbabwe to, uh, to fulfill the Great Commission. You could do it in your own home first, and you could do it with your neighbors and your co-workers. And so they're big on preaching the gospel, leading people and discipling people to Christ. Who's going to get saved? The already saved? No, the lost, right? We need to, to reach the lost. So, of course, anyone's welcome to go to the church because that's how they're going to hear the gospel preached. That's what, how, how some of them are going to be led to either leaving 
and not wanting to go back anymore, or they're going to continue to learn, grow in the knowledge of, of Christ and of the Bible, and will come to a conclusion. I need Jesus in my life. I want to receive him as my Lord and Savior and get baptized. And that's the journey. That's what they want to help people do. I think it's wonderful, even though I don't go to that church. So anyway, so this is the thing that's absolutely crazy. So Justin Peters, you're not going to believe the irony in this. He puts out this video. By the way, this is also his thumbnail from his YouTube channel, but this is on Reformation Charlotte website. So they've kind of repeated the same story and they've even there. So they're, they're throwing traffic Justin Peters way. He's got well over 100,000 views at this point on this video. But look at what it says. If you've if you watch me play some of the clips of what was said in those sermons or if you watch, if you just give these pastors the benefit of the doubt and go watch the whole sermon yourself, especially the one Pastor Youth did just a couple weeks ago on the Great Commission, you're going to recognize that Justin Peters has no integrity he, he will say anything to smear a church, and he doesn't need all the facts. He'll just distort things. He actually makes it sound like this is what First Baptist Orlando stands for. They stand for, here's their four marks of a healthy church, LGBTQ, transgender, sexually immoral, heretics. I mean, there couldn't be a, a, a worse example of someone lacking integrity and purposely distorting another pastor and another an entire church full of people than this. But here's where it gets really interesting. And we haven't even gotten to the juicy stuff yet. This is going to blow your mind when I show you this. So bear with me. In this video, Justin Peters started by going back in 2016 to an event held in the church, not by the church, but in the church on a Tuesday night. Now, he didn't say it was on a Tuesday night. He made it sound like this is just the regular Sunday service or something for, for First Baptist Orlando. And it was the uh, nightclub shooting called Pulse. So Pulse was a gay club. 49 people were killed in 2016 by a madman gunman who went in there and shot up the place. And so the city used the First Baptist Orlando's venue for a memorial service. And they invited outside guests, a lot of elected officials, the mayor was there, and they invited anyone who wanted to come, because it's like it seats over 4,000 people. They invited anyone who wanted to come on this Tuesday night. So this wasn't Sunday service. This wasn't the congregation of First Baptist Orlando. This was a bunch of people who wanted to come out in respect of 49 homosexuals that were gunned down that night. And that makes it an incredible tra tragedy no matter what. So they have a memorial service in First Baptist Orlando, and because of that, they ha and they have an outside speakers, including a pastor, has nothing to do with First Baptist Orlando. And by the way, if you've seen my other videos on this and you feel like, okay, I'm somewhat repeating myself, stay with me. This is new information I'm sharing with you now that will literally blow your mind. Okay, the the hypocrisy. But I gotta I gotta build with the with the story to get to why that's significant. What I'm gonna get to and share with you. So Justin Peters takes this outside of this this event by outsiders held in First Baptist Orlando. And because they said this outside pastor who has nothing to do with the SBC, notice how he says the shocking state of the SBC and his thumbnail, this pastor had nothing to do with the SBC or First Baptist Orlando. And he lifted up the LGBTQ community like they're godly people or something and ushering them into heaven or something in his with his words. He got a standing ovation by, by people. All of these people would have been LGBTQ supporters. As I said, it's not the church people, people from the community going to memorial service on a Tuesday night inside First Baptist Orlando. And so right now you may be thinking, well, First Baptist Orlando should not have allowed that event in their building. Well, okay, that's your opinion. Wait. So Justin Peters paints this church on what happened with this unrelated event because it happened in their building. So therefore, he, connect, he, he draws, there's an association between a pro-LGBTQ event uh, in, a, mass, in a, a, a memorial service with the church and its pastors. And he specifically said, if I was the senior pastor of that church, I would have run up there and I would have grabbed the microphone out of that Pastor Larry Mills' hands, the outsider, right? And I would have rebuked him and I would have apologized to everyone there and I would have repented before God. That's what Justin Peter said he would have done at this memorial service. Now, first of all, I don't believe he would have done that, all right, uh, in front of 4,000 people. But who knows? He said he would have done that. I wonder if he would hold the same standard to this pastor if someone who was a Calvinist who was in the building and doing an event and was saying, let's say John MacArthur was speaking there 
And he started preaching about the elect and how Jesus didn't die on the cross for everyone. Well, I don't believe that. No, I don't think any real Christian believes that. First Baptist Orlando certainly doesn't preach that or teach that. They don't believe that. That's heresy. That's blasphemy. So you start getting up there and start talking about Calvinism and cessationism. I think that's equally blasphemous and and, and, and heresy. So I've... I've made my views on Calvinism and cessationism well known on this channel. So that's where I'm. So I wonder if Justin would hold the same standard. Should pastor youth run up on that stage, grab the microphone out of John MacArthur's hand. If this were to happen inside first Baptist Orlando, rebuke him and then apologize to everyone there and start to repent before God for allowing an outside pastor to say such blasphemous things in the church. Well, Justin Peters thinks so in this case of the nightclub memorial uh, thing. Let me show you this now. So this is where it gets good. I mean, you just can't write this stuff. It's incredible. Ligonier Ministries is a ministry started by Dr. R.C. Sproles, the late Dr. R.C. Sproles, well-known five-point Calvinist. And uh, they, the ministry continues on without him. And they're holding a conference. And it's called Upholding Christian ethics. You think it's ethical for Christians to um, smear the good name of a pastor and his church off of innuendo and gossip from a, 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 a some fake rag of a newspaper? Do you think it's okay to to not watch the full sermon but only take a snippet out and then manipulate your audience into believing that this is a church that wants only heretics and sexually immoral people in their church? That's what they think is healthy instead of it's healthy for a church to reach the lost. That includes those people, which is really what they said. That's not what they, 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 they don't want any of them to stay the same like that. They want them all to grow into knowledge of Christ and become born again Christians and let God transform their lives out from those sins. That's what the church preaches. But Justin Peters just twisted that whole thing. And so did Colin Miller and so did others, right? All because after John MacArthur said it on a Sunday sermon, oh, they all got to pounce on that church now and be dutiful minions of John MacArthur. So do you think that's ethical? That, that's not the best part. This is the 2022, upcoming 2022 Ligonier National Conference, March 24, 26. In, of all places, it's in Orlando, Florida. Could it be? Could it be? It's being held at First Baptist Orlando? Yes. That's where these Calvinists are going to hold their conference. Inside... First Baptist Orlando, and of all people who will be speaking, bingo, John MacArthur is speaking at this event. He will be inside the very church he smeared from the pulpit during his recent sermon, and he's going to be inside this a month from now, and he'll be speaking, and I would love to see pastor youth. I know it won't happen, but I would love to see pastor youth show up for this event and just wait for John MacArthur or one of these others to say something blasphemous and heretical and run up there like Justin Peters would and grab the microphone out of their hands and rebuke them and then you know repent before God for allowing the event of these Calvinists who have a distorted view of salvation with their five points, tulip, whatever. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, that, that won't happen because they've rented the venue, kind of like the city did for the memorial, <laughs> right? The same kind of a thing. But Justin Peters thinks that association alone between the city and that memorial event and the outside pastor coming in saying some blasphemous things, that's enough to paint the whole church, First Baptist, with, a, with, with this, the same brush. Should First Baptist Orlando be considered a Calvinist church now? Certainly not. And let me, let's talk about affiliations for a second because somebody, let me take, take, until we take that down. I'm going to put this on the screen. Somebody on the, uh, that left comment in uh, the uh, Doctrinal Watchdog uh, YouTube channel said they contacted Ligonier Ministries absolutely because they bought into the lie and they are absolutely upset. Why would you hold a conference inside this pro-LGBTQ church? You should be held anywhere else, including maybe just a public place. Anyway, but they got a response. Let me read to you the response from Ligonier Ministries about holding it there. This is what they... This is what they said. Thank you for writing us. Ligonier Ministries holds events in the most suitable venues available. Okay, so that so wh whoever is the owner of the venue, whatever their doctrines are, if they disagree, I guess that doesn't matter. They just want the most suitable venue. Kind of makes sense, right? She wrote, 
we consider many factors in making these decisions, including location, size, cost, and dates. To secure a venue, bookings are often made years in advance. Furthermore, our holding an event at a venue should not be considered an endorsement of that venue's owner's owner or association, whether Christian or non-Christian. And we have no affi affiliation with First Baptist Orlando. If there's anything else we can assist you with, please let us know. Sincerely, Miriam S. So they have no affiliation with First Baptist Orlando other than they're holding an event in the building that's owned by First Baptist Orlando. But Justin Peters thinks if the city does the same thing and rents out the venue and holds a memorial service and invites outside pastors, just like Ligonier is going to be having outside pastors that have nothing to do with First Baptist or Lynn, and they're going to be speaking there. And of all people, John MacArthur is going to be speaking there. I just find that to be absolutely hilarious. Once again, showing the absolute lack of integrity of these, of these men and the hypocrisy by which they operate in. And if you don't see that, I just don't know how I can help you. Anyway, I am very grateful and thankful for churches like First Baptist Orlando. And I really, just as Justin Peters said at the end of his church service, he, uh, did I say church service? At the end of his video, he said, if you belong to this church, First Baptist Orlando, he said, you have a fake pastor, you, have, you belong to a fake church, and you need to get out. I have the same sentiment. I want to I tell the audience right now, if you belong to a church that upholds Calvinism. And one way you might be able to tell that if they don't like the term Calvinist or Calvinism is they call themselves refer Reformed. Now, not all Reformed theology is Calvinism, but you got to look into it because certainly all Calvinism is Reformed theology, if that makes any sense. Okay. So if you find that you're in one of these churches, get out of there. That's not Christianity. That's not the Great Commission. That's not what Jesus taught at all. Get out of there. So just like Justin Peters said about First Baptist Orlando, go find, he's wrong, he's part of the Calvinist crowd, he's part of the problem, he's part of the dangerous uh, doctrines he teaches. Get out of there. Go find yourself a good ch church who supports missionaries and supports uh, the Great Commission and obeying it because that's so utterly important. One thing Pastor Youth, and I'll end on this, said about the Great Commission in the sermon Justin Peters criti criticized him on is that it's the last thing Jesus said before he ascended to heaven. The Great Commission. He said, I believe when he returns again, it's going to be the first thing he asked us. How did you do upholding the mission I gave you? Did you fulfill the Great Commission that I, 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 that I gave you? I think, he, I think this pastor's on to something. I think that makes sense. For those, right? Is that going to mean you're going to get into heaven or not one way or the other? No, but for, for the people who are literally born again, they're, you know, let's face the facts. There are people who are born again that do nothing to fulfill the Great Commission. They're still going to get into heaven. There may not be any treasure there when they get there. <laughs> you know, they, they're not building treasures in heaven, that's for sure, if they're not fulfilling the Great Commission. But still, I think that's what Jesus is. And, you know, and, and it says that he will wipe the tears from our eyes. You ever, you ever wonder why Jesus is going to have to wipe the tears from our eyes when we make it into heaven? You know, one possibility is when we feel the full weight and responsibility of all the missed opportunities to reach out to the lost because we just thought, well, we got the truth. Who cares about them? God will figure it out. God's going to draw them in somehow, but I'm not going to talk to him about the Bible or about Jesus. All those missed opportunities, we will know that there are people who are literally going to hell because maybe they're our neighbor, a coworker, or someone that we never told them. We were like the secret agent Christian, never talking, oh, it's the workplace, can't do that. Whatever, sure you can. And we should. We should stand, even if there's some backlash to it, stand firmly on the Bible and on the teachings of Jesus Christ and be that witness, be that light in a dark world. And if we're not doing it, Jesus is going to have to wipe some serious tears from our eyes when we realize the, the impact we could have had when, and, and we didn't for whatever reason, or whatever excuse. Anyway, that's what I got to say. May the peace and love of Jesus Christ be with you now and forever. Amen. I'll see you in another video real soon. Bye-bye.